Tell me a little bit about the news that Virexis is announcing here at the at the uh, conference. Mm -hmm. So we are, we're coming here to basically update the, the scientific community on our most recent on, on the results of our uh, most recent study. Um, this is a therapeutic vaccine uh, study that we are going to to push forward to the clinic, and the current study is evaluating this uh, this vaccine in uh, in non-humane primates in, in monkeys. And uh, we've we've got actually uh, uh, very superb results with uh, with that vaccine, and and with really intriguing observations how that vaccine impacts the the evolution of uh, of SIV disease, the, the human the simian version of um, of HIV, and how a vaccine is uh, apparently able to to control the viral replication in those animals, uh, hopefully mimicking what will happen in uh, in humans. Now. As I understand it with this data, you're looking at 18 months or two years out, and you're seeing that a small subset of monkeys are functionally cured. Can you explain well, that? Well, that's, that's basically the, the observations we've, uh, we've made lately, absolutely. The, those, uh, those monkeys got vaccinated with our, uh, with our vaccine candidate, and then uh, got challenged, meaning infected with the, the actual extremely pathogenic virus, much like humans humans would be with, uh, with HIV. And we followed those monkeys for a period of uh, a year and a half, 18 months after that, uh, that challenge. And as expected, the, all the control monkeys, uh, basically the monkeys that did not receive any, any vaccine whatsoever, those monkeys died of, uh, of AIDS, the simian version of, uh, of what AIDS is in, uh, in humans. In the vaccine group, however, we, we observed a, a subset of monkeys uh, some of those animals uh, very successfully control the, the viral load over well, that 18 months uh, period, so an extremely, extremely long follow-up. And the more we waited, the more the viral load actually went down to, to undetectable levels. In fact, we, we terminated the study when the, at study completion, those vaccine responders were completely undetectable in terms of the, the viral load. With the, the test currently uh, on the market, we were unable to detect any in a SIV, in a virus uh, replicating in, uh, in those animals. Now what I understand is a little bit different uh, is that not only were you able to show no detectable viral load in the subset in the blood plasma, but also in reservoirs. Absolutely. Tell us what reservoirs you looked in, how that went, and, and what you found. Right, so it's upon observation of, uh, that the virus was basically undetectable in the, in the plasma, so the, at the systemic level in those uh, in those animals. We started to dig a, a bit deeper and question, well, uh, if we are controlling the virus to, to such a, an extent, are we, could we hope for actually uh, depleting the, the pool of hidden virus that's uh, in those reservoirs, typically in the gut or in lymph nodes, much like uh, what happens in, in humans. So we went there, we, we uh, collected some biopsies, we, we collected some pieces of, uh, of those tissues, and indeed, in those animals that responded extremely well to the vaccine, uh, the, the proviral DNA, meaning the, the, the virus that's there, hidden, latent, uh, uh, completely invisible to the immune system, that virus was gone, basically uh, not detectable from, uh, from those reservoirs. And again, uh, again we, we collected uh, pieces of gut, pieces of lymph nodes in those animals. So tell me a little bit more about this vaccine. Obviously, this was a simian version that was used in this, but whether we're looking at the simian version or the human version, what uh, is special about this vaccine? Well, the, our strategy here at Varexis is that we are using HIV, HIV itself as the, as the vector for, for our vaccine strategy. So we, we took the same virus that's causing the, the disease in humans, HIV, and we genetically modify that, uh, that virus so that it becomes absolutely non-pathogenic, non extremely safe to use in humans. But we are still keeping the, the key sequences that are so useful for HIV to efficiently infect itself. So now we are using that as a, as a tool to very efficiently uh, deliver the, the vaccine antigens um, into our patients or into our uh, animal subjects, in this case the, the monkeys. So it's a very, very unique uh, approach that's using all the, all the good sides of, uh, of the HIV uh, virus and not, the, not the, the pathogenic and deleterious effects. So right, very safe and, and very effective. I understand that some people have voiced concerns 
about using a lentiviral vector for a vaccine, right. but that the company actually has used it for a different vaccine in humans already, for a different product in humans right. already. What's the company's experience using the HIV vector, uh, the lentiviral vector in humans already? Right. Actually, people have voiced concerns about using retroviral vectors uh, in humans. Retroviral and lentiviral vectors are slight now. There are very subtle differences differences that are actually not so subtle in terms of, uh, not so subtle in terms of uh, the safety of those, uh, those vectors. Some issues had happened over 10 years ago in, uh, in humans by using a retroviral vectors. We believe and we have demonstrated that we don't have the same uh, safety concerns using those lentiviral vectors that integrate into the, the genome in a, in a very different way. So the, the, we've developed that approach at Verexis uh, for eight years or so in, in the clinic now. So uh, patients, humans, have been uh, receiving those vectors never in a, in a vaccine approach, much like what we are, we are aiming at, uh, at developing now, but in a gene therapy approach for the past eight years, clinic we use those vectors to uh, treat HIV-infected patients, ex vivo, meaning we, we collect cells out of those patients, we insert that vector into those cells, and we reinfuse the, the cells to HIV-infected patients. And we, we've done that in uh, over 65 patients so far, and we've, we've seen extremely perfect tolerability, perfect safety, so far extremely encouraging signs that uh, is allowing us to, to build a safety database and, and proving extremely useful for us now to, to move the, the next product forward into the clinic, that vaccine uh, program. And so what's the anticipated next steps with the vaccine? Well, right now we're, we're uh, like to take advantage of, of uh, uh, so, so nice results in, uh, in animals. Decrease of viral load, preservation of the CD4 compartment. We, we mentioned the, the control of the, of the virus even in, in those reservoirs, in so those sanctuaries, uh, immune sanctuaries. Um, and we've observed uh, improved survival in those monkeys. Well, now we'd like to translate all of that in humans, in, uh, in HIV-infected humans. This will be a therapeutic approach. And if we could um, initiate those, uh, those studies to try to mimic and replicate what we've seen in, uh, in monkeys, that would be uh, a very good achievement. So, of course, the, the initial studies are going to be small, focused on safety, focused on demonstrating the, the proof of principle that uh, uh, our vaccine candidate can induce a strong immune response in humans, much like they did in, uh, in monkeys, and possibly uh, control um, uh, viral replication in those uh, people who are it, infected with HIV. Excellent. I'm, Dio, I could think of one other question just to make sure and clarify. Will, were the monkeys on any other therapies and would humans be on any other therapies for the trial? So, yes, the, in, for, for the humans, yes, they will be um, on, on therapies. Let me explain uh, briefly what we've, uh, what we've done. The, the goal for the monkey study was to design a very stringent, very, um, uh, very stringent study to, to um, explore whether uh, our vaccine has the capability to, to strongly control that uh, viral load. So we put ourselves in a worst case uh, scenario, meaning those monkeys had no other antiretroviral drugs, only the vaccine could fight uh, HIV replication. And we did see that, uh, that control apparently happening in a subset of our monkeys. Now we are not going to set the bar that high in, uh, in humans, it's not our, our goal. Uh, in humans we have excellent tools, excellent drug therapies, for example, to, to control HIV to some extent. So what we're going to do for the, for the clinical study is uh, take patients who are well controlled uh, with their current drug regimen, keep that uh, drug regimen in place, immunize those, uh, those people, vaccine, give them the, the vaccine, and then potentially explore whether the, the response from the vaccine is going to be strong enough to be able to interrupt the, the treatment in those patients and, and check whether the virus can be kept in check just using the immune response uh, elicited by the vaccine. All right. Thank you. Thank you.